My name is Krista Abril. I'm the assessment coordinator at the Maine DOE for both the Maine Science Assessments and the Maine Three-Year Assessment in Reading and Mathematics. And before I turn it over to our New Meridian and MZD folks, I just want to go over some housekeeping items. So please feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat as we're going through. We are recording, so we do ask that you keep your mics muted during the presentation, but at the end during the Q&A, you are welcome to unmute at that time and ask your questions. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dwayne. Oh, there we go. Looks like you just get to look at my background <laughs> and not me. There we go. Okay. Welcome. I'm Dwayne Dixon. I am the pro program manager from New Meridian, welcome everyone today to uh, the main science live Q&A session for installing the lockdown browser. Um, this is our first of course in a series of Q&A sessions. And this is specifically targeting the Atom Online Assessment Administration system and questions about installing a lockdown browser. Um, again, my name is Dwayne Dixon, I'm the moderator here. And the program manager for the main science assessment at New Meridian. We also, of course, Chris has already introduced herself as the associate coordinator from Maine. And we also have with us Susan Van Gundy, who is our resident expert on all things Adam from MZD. Um, just a couple of housekeeping tasks before we get started. We do ask that you submit your questions via chat. We will, of course, be monitoring that throughout the session so that we can pick up your questions quickly and easily without having to worry about trying to speak over each other and of course, figuring out whose turn it is to speak. Uh, we do ask that you keep your microphone muted unless we ask you to unmute it so that you can ask us a specific question or to clarify your question. And just a reminder that all of the Q&A sessions, again, to reiterate what Krista said, they are recorded. And so if you have to drop off early or if your colleague wasn't able to make it, you can direct them to watch and listen later. Okay. On the screen, we do have the contact information or support desk, of course. And just a reminder, we do have three areas of support on that, which Susan will cover for us. Again, there is the online self-service here, the toll-free number, as well as any specific questions dealing with policy going to uh, Krista. And we have the support desk here. And kind of at this point here, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Susan, which will go over a few of our things, particularly areas here real brief about support, and then also on the installation of the browser. Great, thanks Dwayne, thanks Krista. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Susan Van Gundy with MZD. And, um, Always delighted to talk about things like lockdown browsers, <laughs> my interests. Um, all right, so I am gonna share my screen, I believe, and we will go. Let's see, entire screen, there we go. And I'm also gonna stop my video because that in my house makes it easier to share my screen. <laughs> um, okay. Apparently I have to allow screen recording in the system setting, excuse me. Yep, well. Dwayne, what I'm going to ask you to do is share your screen again and bring up Zendesk, and you will need to drive for me. Right. Okay, do that. Excellent. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we just want to orient you to um, where to get more information at any time, uh, not just 
uh, immediately following this session, but um, how to find the recordings of this session um, later and where to access all the resources that we're going to discuss that'll help you with the lockdown browser and many other topics. Um, this is the main science support help desk that is being shown on screen. Um, and we can put the, the link to that and in the chat. Um, so people have it directly, but this is um, our instance of a support area called Zendesk. So you do see it sometimes referenced that way in our other materials that going to the main science support site and or the Zendesk. <laughs> and um, so what we have here is a, a whole range of materials that will be useful to you, um, not just where you go to request help if you need it through the ticketing system, but also to look at PDFs, um, online articles, video clips. Um, there's a range of resources for all of the things related to test administration for main science, um, not just the lockdown browser information that we'll be presenting today. So um, just a quick orientation then right across the top, you'll see if there's um, an announcement or we post a new article that will be sometimes there in the system status. Um, just below that uh, to the right, we can um, or you're po <laughs> putting the link in. Thank you, Dwayne. Mm -hmm. um, there's an area where you can request help. Um, with most things on this site, there are going to be multiple ways to get there. So whichever you find first or remember easiest. So there's the request help um, button that's there in the header uh, of what Dwayne is showing right there. Same information, same functionality in that big box um, that says request help as well. And um, then there's also, if you scroll down uh, or see down at the bottom, there is the, the call us um, section. Uh, Dwayne, is our toll-free number live at the moment or it will be soon? No, it's not live yet. It will be live April 17th. Okay. Um, but that's where you can actually, if you, if your computer is enabled with voice over IP calling, you can call, actually do a phone call from that button. But then we also have the toll free number. Um, you can call through your regular phone. Um, also a little bit closer to the time of the assessment window, um, there'll be a chat functionality and online chat functionality as well. So lots of ways to get help. Um, going to sort of showcase the how we have the resources um, oriented here by starting to look at resources for lockdown browser if you're looking for that um, this big button in the center here resources document downloads that's the first place i always go um, because i personally am still like if, I, if there's a pdf that i can download for later <laughs> um, i'm always looking for that so if you can click on that duane And you can see there's a, a lot of information that we post and this is being updated regularly. And you can see that third bullet down says device system and lockdown browser installation guide. And that is gonna be the key document um, and the starting point for lockdown browser. If you wanna open that, Dwayne. There is an article here that talks about the basics of the lockdown browser, but you can also download the guide there, the link that's highlighted in blue to download. And that does open up a PDF. Um, and if we could just take a quick look at that, Dwayne. This is the updated uh, manual for lockdown browser installation that, or guide, excuse me, um, updated for spring uh, 2023. And all of the information that we're gonna talk about today is in here. Um, in Zendesk, we also have some articles and they take this information that's in the primary source guide here and break it into smaller chunks, make it a little easier to digest, a little easier to find exactly what you're looking for in a hurry. Um, so this information is, you'll see duplicated in some of the articles that are posted and some of the quick 
quick checklist uh, kinds of resources as well, but this is the, the main source document for the installation guide information. And if we want to just go back to uh, the main Zendesk for a moment. And um, I don't know if you're able to keep that PDF open in another tab, Dwayne. <laughs> I was planning to kind of jump back and forth to it. Um, that might be yep. handy. Yeah, thank you. All right. So back in the main, uh, in the, the, the landing page of Zendesk, everything's main, right? Um, there are some other ways to find resources as well. Uh, in the FAQs, there are a number of articles related to Lockdown Browser, and we also keep these up to date, post updates. Like there's one you can see at the bottom of the start. Yeah, how do I uninstall the Lockdown Browser if you actually feel like you need to uninstall. Um, it's not required when you do your update, but um, there for some systems anyway. Um, but there's a step-by-step -step across different operating systems in that article. Um, there's also, if you scroll down just a little bit, Dwayne, there's some other things too, like um, there's an article about the network requirements, general network requirements that apply to both the lockdown browser and running the testing. So um, the FAQs are definitely another way to get at these articles and information. And then if you want to just back up one page. And um, you can also always search. And so in the search bar there underneath our little pronghorn antelope, um, which they do not have in Maine, but um, if you just want to type in lockdown or lockdown browser there, you can also see quick links to some of these articles and um, FAQ postings and things that, and here you can see the Q&A session from last year about the lockdown browser is there. We'll be posting the one at the end of today's session as well. Um, installation instructions and then access to the guide that we already started to look at. So. Um, that's just the quick, uh, quick overview of ways to get information that you might be looking for about this. Um, so now if you can go to the PDF, Dwayne, that'd be great. And just sort of scroll down past the table of contents and whatnot. Um, here, there is information about system requirements. Um, they're not different from last year. Uh, and they're not, um, they're compatible with the other state system testing that you've been doing is my understanding. Um, go ahead and keep scrolling, Join. sorry. I was trying to scroll on my own screen and it wasn't working. Um, there's information about uh, when you're setting up the system overall for things that need to be whitelisted. Um, it explains that we do have, we blacklist some applications and that is in a, an important key to why we're using the lockdown browser at all. So the whole point um, of the lockdown browser is that it allows the students to have a secure testing environment that prevents them from accessing other tools on their machine um, or other systems, other websites. And when the lockdown browser is launched and the student begins testing using the lockdown browser, they'll only have access um, to these things that are needed for testing and they won't be able to jump out to do a quick Google search and they won't be able to um, have a second monitor running connected to their laptop and they won't be able to take a screenshot. And so it's um, a environment for that secure testing and it is required that the tests be delivered to students using the lockdown browser. Um, and Krista, I don't know if you have any more you want to say about that from a policy point of view, um, but you'll see through all the manuals that um, this is how the test is actually delivered, only using the lockdown browser. I have nothing to add. We have a lockdown browser for other assessment as well. Okay, great. Um, the 
practice tests can be run in the lockdown browser or not, but the actual test uh, needs to be in lockdown. And so um, that means that the lockdown browser will need to be installed on each student device that is being used for testing. Um, we highly recommend that even if those devices already have the version of the lockdown browser from last year, that you update that so that there is a fresh install for um, every device. Uh, we make changes from year to year to the code of the program to make security improvements, to keep up with what's happening um, with operating systems and um, with the Chrome browser itself. And so um, the, the best, most up-to-date and guaranteed kind of way to have that compatibility is to make sure that you're running the newest version of the lockdown browser on each student testing machine. Um, and the easiest way to get to that, um, these instructions just right here that are on the screen, um, the lockdown browser is downloaded from the, our website at adamexam.com. So if you want to just click on that for a moment, Dwayne. And from this one link, you will have the option to download um, by clicking on download lockdown browser. And then you'll get options for depending on whether you are installing for Mac or Windows. Um, and you'll need to know if your Mac device is doing, has a, um, the processor, it, is the Intel systems or the or Silicon, you'll know that. <laughs> um, and then you basically just follow instructions once you click on that to download it to your to the machine um, and follow the install, regular install there. There's no additional setup or settings that you need to configure. Um, once you do the download, um, then you can just launch it from there. Uh, for um, individual machines. The, for uh, the lockdown browser, it can be um, installed using managed devices on Mac. Um, if you're managing, uh, if you're using a centrally managed system for Mac, you can do that, use the lockdown browser that way, but you don't have to. However, with Chromebooks, it only will work in the managed setting. Um, you're not able to do an individual install on an individual machine um, for Chromebooks. But uh, for other managed systems, you can do it managed or, or individual. Um, and then what you see here are those options for, for Mac and Windows. If you're running Chromebooks, you will go to the Chrome um, Chrome store <laughs> uh, and have the access to it there. Um, and that information is in the lockdown browser too, exactly what it's called in, in the Chrome store. Um, or if you're running on iPads, you can download from the um, Apple store iOS version is, uh, called the Atom Secure Browser. Um, and so it'll be an install from, you, you'll need the apps for the um, iPads and the Chromebooks. Yeah, thank you, Dwayne. And so that's how to find the, the browser itself to do the install. and make sure that it's updated. Um, if you're looking for the update, uh, I did, again, the um, browser is updated since last year. Um, so the version number that is available today is 1.6.2. Um, yeah, sorry, not of the operating system, but of the browser, yeah. Um, it is compatible with the 
this range of operating systems, it's pretty much, you know, the newest on, on each and then uh, a few versions older. So, um, yeah, we have that information there in the actual lockdown browser guide as well. And, um, Yeah, sorry, I'm seeing the, the questions kind of come in in the chat as well. Um, and so I'm going to pause there for just a second and um, take a look we, since we do now have some some questions coming in from the chat. Um, so the first question is, what is the version number for the Atom app on Chromebooks? Um, for Atom, the um, so for the lockdown browser, I actually, I don't know if it's the same version number. I'll have to look that up. Sajida, are you on? Yes. And do you have that information? Yep. About specifically if the version numbers look different on for Chrome versus the so iOS we, app download, et cetera. Uh, do you need the exact version numbers for the Mac and the Windows you're saying? Yeah, or if they're, um, if the version numbers differ, I presume they may. We'll have to get that mm -hmm. information. Let me check and get back, Susan. Just give me a few seconds. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can move on and then let me check in. I'll get back. Okay. Great. That's a hard one. So one of the next questions in the chat is, is this correct for iOS version 12.1 to 15.7? Are we okay with iOS 16? It should be compatible with whatever the newest version that's out. Um, this information in the uh, that's in the manual is what we release at the beginning of each school year. Um, but we do so at, at that time of the release of this information, we were at 15.7. Um, we do maintain update with newer versions as they're coming in. Um, so that should be okay. Uh, we can take that as a question to just confirm that, but um, it should be. Yeah, that is correct, Susan. So it supports the latest iOS versions. Yeah, in general, these um, operating system specifications can be thought of as the lowest version listed or newer. So iOS version 12.1 or newer. Yep. The next question is, if student devices are not on the same network, how should we whitelist those sites? That is not a, something I would know how to do. <laughs> um, I would say work with your IT team um, how however that is handled in terms of the whitelisting for other, other apps. If you've had a lockdown browser for other assessments, they likely also had a whitelist. Next question is, is Ventura not compatible with the browser? Sajida, I don't know if you have uh, yep, I don't know the answer to that as well, but we can check and get back, Susan. I have, I'm sorry to speak up, I, I'm on Mac OS Venture and I believe it works okay. But I was also using the older version of Atom, so now I just downloaded the new one and we'll package it to release for distribution. Great, thank you for adding that. There's also the question, can you share a PDF of this PowerPoint? Um, so what, you, what you've been seeing on the screen is actually the lockdown browser installation guide. Um, 
rather than a PowerPoint, but I'll make sure that all the registrants receive a link to that guide as well as a link to the science support site. Excellent, thank you. Are there any other questions? And if Dwayne, you just wanted to, when you're done doing that, just kind of go back to the PDF, yeah, and just show them what else is in this documentation so that you can see there's, um, in addition to this sort of basic information is, uh, if you scroll down, there's step-by-step -step for each of the major operating systems. So you'll see, <coughs> um, there is a section for Mac, for Windows, for iOS, for Chromebooks, and more step-by-step -step detailed instructions there with some screenshots of how it looks, what you're likely to encounter, make sure you're on the right track. Um, there also is some information there that we whizzed by that is uh, what, when you launch the lockdown browser, um, it will check your system settings for a few things and it will give alerts. It won't let the test start if it detects that there's another monitor that is connected to the device. If it detects that you are still running one of the blacklisted applications on your computer. So like, I can't show you <laughs> what it looks like to launch the lockdown browser in Zoom because it would say you're running uh something in the background that's not compatible with a lockdown browser go shut that down and then come back and try to launch again um and uh so everything will need to be shut down on the student's device all other programs for the lockdown browser to to run um and there's some information in this guide about the details of that um there are also some things that it will give you a warning for but it won't stop you from launching the test and one of those is um low battery. Uh, so you already have as part of your checklist for getting ready for test day to make sure those laptops and iPads are charged um, and ideally that they're plugged in. But uh, it will give you a warning if it's low battery, but it, you can still launch the test. So um, just to keep an eye on that as standard practice. <laughs> um, I'm seeing another question. Uh, I think we're looking for the Chromebook app version number still. Sajidu was looking for that. Um, do proctors need the lockdown browser or just the testers? Just the students who are taking the test. Um, proctors can get into the Proctor dashboard uh, just through a regular web browser. And that is the same situation for uh, accessing Adam for um, the district assessment coordinators and school assessment coordinators who are doing rostering, creating classes, those kinds of things. You do not need to do that in the lockdown browser. The lockdown browser is only for administering a test. That was a great question. Um, just as a, I think this is in the guide, but once the lockdown browser starts, you won't be able to adjust the volume on the student's device. So uh, if your student is using text-to-speech, it's good to check the volume on the machine before um, launching the lockdown browser. So a question just came through for Mac OS, will the lockdown browser require any permissions and system preferences to be enabled? If so, is there a configuration profile that can be downloaded to automate the process? For the, the standard install, no. Um, Dwayne, I may ask you uh, to speak with regard to like the JAMP files um, for the managed Mac, um, there is information for that, like the configuration profile for that, that will be 
uh, posted. I don't believe it's been posted yet for 2023. This is information that we work with the state of Maine to provide. Um, it's not something that's specific to um, the, the lockdown browser. Uh, it's not something we developed, but um, the, that information um, will be posted for 2023 here very soon. And if you need that information, um, if that kind of answers that last question. But if you have more to say about that, Dwayne, you're more familiar with the JAM files than I am. No, you're spot on, Susan. We're just waiting to get that file and the updated link um, to be finished. And then when we do, we'll update this article. Um, and make sure to update it where it says for 2023 with the correct link down here. And thank, thank you, Sajida. I see that uh, you've posted the Chromebook app version is the current one is 1.1.6. That's all of the questions in the chat. Are there any other questions? I was just going to add, um, related to the the question about proctors logging in um, or administrators logging in, you don't need the lockdown browser. You will see the version of Adam sometimes change when you log in to Adam, um, and it just updates at the next time you log in. Again, we um, have things that get updated on a regular basis in Adam for maintaining security and um, things like that, and but that is an automatic process for for Adam when you're logging into that, um, and you don't have to download anything to your computer for for those functions. Just again for the student testing. Yep. Yeah. And let me just double check my own notes here. Make sure I covered everything. Um, we usually get the question, I think I maybe mentioned already, but it usually comes across as a specific question. Uh, if you have to first uninstall a previous version before installing the new version and um, they are set to, it depends on your system. Like I just tried it again on mine, uh, my MacBook right before the session and it asks me if I wanna replace it or if I wanna keep two versions and you know, we recommend you just maintain the the most recent version to avoid any confusion. But you don't have to go in and actively uninstall um, in order to get the refreshed version for this year. All right. And any other questions? for Susan or other folks. Oh, yeah, we have success, successful update while we've been working, <laughs> while we've been chatting. I love to see that. Excellent. 